Welcome to this another episode of Optic Street Debates. Today, uh, today, and myself, Theodore, we will talk a little bit about fixed body spotting scopes and expandable spotting scopes. So today, as far as I know, you covered uh, all the emails we received regarding this matter, a couple of them in the last year or something, uh, and you have prepared some questions. So let's start. Okay, well, the first question, the first and most important question is, uh, of course, obvious. Why, sp why uh, fixed and why expandable? Well, we have here a straight fixed, mm -hmm. um, fixed body spotting scope because only this can be really compared with an expandable. The angled ones are so different in use and in, in physical appearance that they are not able to be compared. Uh, the main difference is that expandable can be stored at a really compact size. So if you just put them completely together like this, you see that the length of an expandable spotting scope when it's not in use it's much smaller than with the fixed body. That means while you're transporting them, especially in the, in the backpack or somewhere, it's just smaller. And also if you feel the weight, you see that those are usually lighter. Mm -hmm. So the expandable spotting scopes are lighter and smaller and thus much better in, for transportation or just to, to carrying them around in the, in the backpack, which usually people do with them. Uh, for which type of use would we recommend uh, the expandable uh, spotting scope and uh, the fixed straight scope? Well, the straight and expandable straight scopes are always used for hunting, tactical shooting, where there is a lot of movement, where <coughs> you're always carrying the spotting scope with you, and then when you need to use it, you just pull it out of your backpack, use it for a couple of minutes, and then store it back. Um, both of them have a couple of advantages and disadvantages. If we look at the fixed body straight spotting scopes, their main disadvantage is the size. Because when you put this in your backpack, you see that there is uh, almost no space left for other stuff. Uh, with expandable, this is much easier because they are much shorter when, mm -hmm. they, are, when they are contracted to their minimum size. Um, optically, fixed body are usually a little bit better if you look at the same price class, mm -hmm. normally because always with an expandable the alignment is always a little bit problematic because no matter how good this system of expandable tubes is made there is always a possibility the alignment of the of the lenses in the eyepiece part with the objective lens can be problematic that they are not completely 100% aligned uh, the other disadvantage of, uh, of a foldable or expandable um, Spotting scopes is that they are not waterproof mm -hmm. and because they are not waterproof they are not filled with dry nitrogen or dry argon and due to this reason they can fog at low temperatures mm -hmm. because even if you hear when I put this together you hear I'm pushing out yeah. the air mm -hmm. so I'm pushing out the air from from the this expandable spotting scope and this is the problem of all expandable spotting scopes even this Swarovski which is the best example of this type has the same problem that they are not able to produce it 100% waterproof and they are not able to produce it uh, filled with dry nitrogen mm -hmm. so it can fog in the winter. Uh, but premium but premium foldable uh, spotting scopes can be uh, compared to the, to the straight ones. With optical, right? optical property, yes. yes. If we look at exactly to this Swarovski, uh, I think this one is CTS mm -hmm. 85. 85. Um, Normally, the quality of the lenses, the quality of the eyepiece is on such an extremely high level that the optics performance, optical performance would be mm -hmm. comparable to any fixed body uh, spotting scope. It is however true that when you expand it, you can hear how the air is going in and when the air goes in, also the moisture goes in. Mm -hmm. So now at low temperatures, the fogging, internal fogging can occur. With a fixed body, this is not possible because it's sealed. So no moisture can enter the spotting scope and at low temperatures it, it will perform fog-proof while expandable won't. But it's much bigger, much heavier. Yes, of course. So, this is one of the pluses. You can uh, mm -hmm. fold this one back and this one is as it is in, in its form. 
yeah. what about what about the price? Are are thick are, are foldable spotting scopes cheaper or uh, are they even uh, more costly than the straight ones or the angled ones? Well, this is a hard question because with foldable there is uh, a lot less choice than with fixed body. Mm -hmm. Because with fixed body you can find spotting scopes all the way from 50 euros up to 5000 euros. With foldable there is really a lot of choices up to let's say 300 euros mm -hmm. full of products then almost nothing until 1000 euros and 1000 euros you have uh, expandable uh, Swarovski the first model CTC mm -hmm. then Meopta, Optolit I think those three players are in that uh, field of yes. uh, 1000 euros 1000 to 1500 euros and then you have 2000 plus uh, class of optics where only CTS, this one which we have here now, is available. While with fixed body you have all the flavors in between. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's hard to say. Uh, I can say that those which are the best uh, foldable like this one can match the optical performance of the fixed body. Of course they are not fog proof. This is the main difference but you sacrifice fog proof performance because you usually use this uh, foldable um, or expandable spotting scopes while hunting chamois and other uh, creature well other game in the in the mountains and you usually do this in the summer or, or autumn where fogging is still not a problem because the temperature is yes. not so low and you really gain a lot of space in your backpack when you have a foldable spotting scope instead of fixed body one uh, but the magnifications of, uh, of foldable spotting scopes are basically can be the same as yeah. normal spotting scopes. With this one, which we have here now, it's 20 to 60. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's basically the same like this one. This one is, uh, I think, uh, 22 to 60. So it's basically the same. Mm -hmm. They also, both of them have a, um, a plate for, tripod. for the tripod. Even though straight spotting scopes are not really meant for tripods. Uh, and this foldable also has a, a sling for a, for a carrying strap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so. uh, what about uh, we're still at the uh, we're still with the foldable spotting scopes? Can uh, do, do they come with with the eyepiece or uh, do we have to buy the eyepiece separately? Yeah, we know that with fixed body you always buy the eyepiece separately. Usually, usually yeah. you buy it in yeah. a in a in a package, <clears throat> but they usually are sold also separately. Yes. And with the high quality expandable or foldable spotting scope is the same. Like this Swarovski, this Swarovski can be used with three or four different uh, eyepieces. Mm -hmm. And the eyepiece can be, oh, I think it can be removed. Yeah, it can be removed. Yes, I think it's Maybe the notch. Yeah, yeah, I will probably not do it now. Yeah, like this. Okay. okay. So <coughs> you, you can remove the, the eyepiece the same way like on the fixed body. Yes. Uh, but the cheaper, cheaper uh, models, Foldable models usually come with the, with the eyepiece which is permanently attached, which you are not able to remove like we did now. So it's again all about the pricing. If you buy something more affordable then it's usually from one piece, you are not able to, to change and have different eyepieces uh, for, for, the, for the scope. Um, <coughs> if it's more expensive like this Swarovski you can. With fixed body you can always remove the, the eyepiece. Okay, so in general, if we cover <coughs> which one would have more positive, positive factors, uh, the straight one or the foldable one? I would say if you're a hunter and you wish to hunt in the mountains, chamois, go with the foldable one okay. because it's much easier to carry around. For all other activities, if you're a sport shooter, if you're a tactical shooter and so on, go with the, with the straight one, fixed body because fog proof. Uh, features, fog proof feature is important and waterproofness is also important. Okay. Um, so it goes, it all goes to a trade-off. Yes. If you are willing to sacrifice the waterproofness and fog proofness for the size and weight, go for the foldable. Mm -hmm. If fog proofness and uh, waterproofness are more important, go with the fixed body. Okay, I have one last question. Mm -hmm. I know that most spotting scopes also come with a uh, this sunshade. Uh, yeah, I you just pull it out, I think. Yes, something like this. Oh, or not. Not on this one, maybe? Maybe not on this one. <laughs> yeah, it's like this, okay. Yeah. Uh, is this also the case with the, with the foldable ones or...? With some, but not with, with all. Some. With mm -hmm. some, but not with all. I would also say that 
if this feature is quite common on fixed body, it's not so common on foldables. On foldables, only some of them come with a with a mm -hmm. with a sunshade uh, incorporated into the into the body. Okay, Theodore, thank you. You're welcome. So I hope we covered most of the basics on this topic: uh, foldable or extendable spotting scopes versus fixed body uh, spotting scopes. But if you forgot something, please use comments on this video or send us an email. And normally, if you like the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care.